Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. I uh, appreciate you spending a little bit of time this afternoon here with us, learning more about our Starship Cloud application and our integration with Sage 100. Um, so I'm going to jump right into it. I do have a very short uh, presentation to review. Uh, and then I'm going to turn it over to Matt uh, here, who's going to run everyone through a quick demonstration of our Starship solution uh, and the integration that we have with Sage 100. And then we'll turn it over to some questions that you all may have that we can uh, answer for you while we have you. So uh, with that being said, let's jump right into this. Um, all right. So just a little bit about us. Most of you, not all of you know who we are. So I'm not going to spend much time there. Uh, but really what I want to highlight here is, you know, Starship being around for over 30 plus years now, um, it's really our flagship product. Uh, we came out with it back in 1989 uh, with an on-premise solution at the time. Uh, our cloud solution developed, uh, we started development around 2016 um, and launched about 2020, right prior to COVID hitting. Um, and it's been up and running ever since with over 400 customers running. Uh, on that application alone now. Um, so again, we have uh, over 22 years of experience here in the Sage community. Um, so again, it's not a new product to the Sage world by any means, uh, but it's more of a broader product, which you'll see here, uh, that brings a lot more value to uh, all of you on the call today. Um, <clears throat> so I just wanna highlight just four features right here. And there's obviously a lot more to Starship than just these four. Uh, components here we're going to speak to, but um, really Starship is a multi-carrier application. Uh, it's designed to help uh, integrate all of your parcel carriers that you might be using, uh, along with your LTL carriers as well, uh, if you do have any pallets that you're shipping today. Um, and we can speak to you more about that if you do have that need, um, maybe on a one-on-one -on -one call if needed. And it's really designed to kind of bring everything into one application uh, so you don't have to go to your world ship or your ship manager or your postal uh, platform any longer. You're going to incorporate all of those accounts into uh, Starship. You'll be able to see all of those rates and process the right documentation as needed. Uh, it's really helpful to reduce uh, freight spend. Uh, everyone's looking uh, with inflation, the way it's being uh, today, rising costs everywhere you turn. Um, everyone's trying to save some money somewhere. Um, <clears throat> so we're trying to help reduce the freight spend for you. Uh, by doing this, we're offering, you know, in Starship a rate shop feature that Matt will kind of show you here, um, but really kind of showing you all of your carriers in one place. Again, lowest to highest, fastest transit time, whatever you want to uh, look at. Um, also, by using Starship, you will get access to our discounted postage rates uh, that are offered through Starship here as well. Uh, maybe you're not using Postal today, uh, but you're thinking about it. Uh, but this is a good way to see maybe kind of what that rate would be with the postal service, uh, especially if you're shipping, say, a lightweight product, a closed zone. Um, it might be beneficial for you to avoid some of those surcharges you experience today. Um, we also can support various e-commerce integrations. So uh, uh, marketplaces like Amazon, eBay, Etsy, um, shopping carts like, you know, uh, WooCommerce, BigCommerce, um, all of those are supported with integrations direct but also as an extension that we can talk about as well if needed. Um, so a lot of users do have that as an avenue to receive orders in. Uh, and again, if that's something that you're interested in learning more about, um, Matt here or Will can more definitely speak to that uh, with you offline if needed. And lastly, if I wanna point out, you know, really it helps simplify you know, your shipping paperwork. So everyone thinks of shipping a label, which is great, uh, but as we know in the uh, transportation world, there's more to it than just shipping a label. Um, so you might have international leads where we need some commercial invoices to be processed. We can help you do that and generate a commercial invoice. You might be a hazmat shipper, right, where we need to print uh, OP900 forms uh, or labels. We can help you do that. Um, or even LTL and printing your bill of lading um, and being able to process that um, for the specific carrier. So all of these things and much more um, from a reporting and, and uh, uh, document perspective are all supported here in the application itself. <clears throat> so um, one thing I'll spend kind of a little bit of time here on this slide, but really why do we want to convert to Starship Cloud, right? You're all ship gear users using the application today. Um, <clears throat> really number one thing is reduce IT expenses. So as you know, with all of your carrier applications that you need to go through an annual upgrade, um, that takes time, right? That takes someone time to go and upgrade all those manual systems, including ship gear. 
ship gear server is removed, right? We don't have to worry about that any longer by going to a cloud um, application here. Um, we run our Starship application up on our Microsoft Azure environment. Um, you just have to worry about supplying the hardware computers to load a connector onto and going to a URL um, that anybody can access. Um, <clears throat> by having a cloud application, you're never worried about being on an old uh, version of the software. Starship, because it's cloud-based, it automatically will do its upgrade overnight um, on a quarterly basis, uh, and you will have access to the latest version at all, any time in the, in the year. Um, so you're never worried about my running two versions below, one, you know, version below, whatever it is, you're always having the latest and greatest of all the features we support. One of the key elements here that I always like to highlight here is really uh, what makes it different is really access to unlimited users. So this is important from not only back warehouse personnel, but also maybe front office personnel being able to access a rate code or being able to access a report. Um, you'll have access to unlimited users in all of our different tier plans we offer, as well as the different, um, all the various carrier interfaces we support from UPS, FedEx, and all the way through LTL carriers. So there's no more buying per module uh, like we have with our on-premise application. This is all provided to you at one monthly cost that we uh, offer to you. Uh, and then offering, you know, to manage a seasonality, right? A lot of you might be seasonal. Right now we're going through the holiday uh, time period. Uh, so some of you might see some higher volumes this time of year um, where you can up your plan if needed to get the volume that you're looking for, but then bring it right back down when the holidays are over. So that kind of gives you full control of your plan where you're not paying us one monthly fee for the entire year or one upfront cost for the entire year, you'll have access to changing your plan accordingly inside the portal that you'll have all access to. Restricting user access as needed. Um, so you may not want your shippers uh, to potentially go in and make changes to your monthly plan um, or have access to a specific uh, function inside the application. You can restrict different uh, access to different users, um, however you like to, to do that. Um, you don't want everyone to be an administrator, obviously, uh, but you want to make certain roles in the application and, and create certain functions that they have access to um, uh, for themselves. And then lastly, the big, probably the biggest bullet point on this entire slide, we're eliminating world ship and ship manager, postal, any application you're using today, all of those applications you do not need to use with Starship. Starship, again, is its own application. It connects with your UPS, FedEx accounts, uses your rates, all of that is done. Nothing changes for you as a user. Um, billing, pickups are all done the same way. Um, so again, we're just eliminating that platform from having you to process any labels through. This is just a quick slide of the various carriers we support. Um, so you can see here everything from parcel carriers to LTL carriers. We have some Canadian carriers on here as well and some 3PLs as well that we support. Um, if you look at this slide and say, well, I don't see any of my carriers on here, um, not to worry, right? Um, especially from the LTL world, uh, Matt or Will, we can talk to you about um, you know, our bill of lading module that we offer. Also, Freight View is one of our 3PLs that we support where we can load different tariffs onto. Uh, so you can actually see those rates coming through the Starship. Uh, but again, we can just supply you with more information if that's a need. Uh, but again, this gives you an access, you know, or at least a view of the 25 or so carriers that are, we do support through APIs today. And then just uh, real quick here, just on the e-commerce slide, is just basically uh, all the various marketplaces I mentioned earlier and the carts we support. So again, if this is a need where you need uh, integration back to those carts with tracking or update of statuses, please let us know. We can talk more in detail about that um, and give you more information around how we support these different uh, applications. All right, with that being said, I am gonna turn it over to Matt uh, to walk everyone through a quick demo. So Matt, uh, I will give it back to you here. All right, thank you, Simon. Okay, so just one second, I'll share my screen. Make sure we've got the right screen shared. There we go. Okay. Okay, let me just jump over to my demo machine. 
All right. Well, everyone, again, thank you for taking time to join our webinar. And as Simon mentioned, you know, Starship really is what we call multi-carrier, multi-mode. So I'm going to try to point out some of the differences between Starship and in-ship gear. But you're really going to see, uh, you know, it's going to be a deeper integration to Sage 100. And again, I'm, I'm just going to do a brief overview, but please feel free to reach out if you want to uh, do a deeper dive. You know, most certainly you can do a deeper discovery call, find out, you know, all your shipping needs. I, I do find a lot of ship gear. Uh, customers that we talk to. Oh, yeah, we also do LTL. So again, nice thing with Starship, really as a shipper, I'm going to be able to process all my different type of shipments just through the Starship uh, interface. Okay. And as you see on my machine, um, I don't even have Sage 100 installed. I don't, I'm not inside of Sage 100. So again, the nice thing is as a shipper, all I really need, you know, maybe we have those shipping stations out in the work out in the warehouse. We really just need Starship installed and I can just kind of live and breathe inside Starship. Up top, uh, just kind of like you, you use with, with uh, ship gear, uh, we do have a source field, but with Starship, we, we give you options. Um, you know, we can pull by sales order, customer, or by invoice. Honestly, most clients it is, we pull by the sales order number. And of course, I could scan in a barcoded sales order number up in this source interface. I could manually type it in, or if I wanted to down below, as you see, I could even manually look up those sales orders. And with this connection, even though I'm not inside a Sage or have Sage 100 installed on this workstation, just know it's still going to be a live connection. So, for example, with our sales orders, as the front office is adding new orders, um, Starship's going to pick them up. Or if they go in and make, say, maybe they have to make a revision to an existing sales order, you know, they could go in and make that change and Starship's immediately going to pick up that, you know, revision that they made. Okay. So, we do have options. Uh, you can get into sorting any of these columns. As a shipper, I could add, remove columns, even apply filters. So there's a lot of different options on how we can narrow that search result. Or even as a shipper, I can kind of customize this lookup screen to meet my requirements. Okay. Um, other features we do support, group related. Hey, if you ever have the issue where, you know what, in my system right now, I have seven orders that are going to the same ship to. Starship can show you that. And now as a shipper, I could quickly select all those click create shipment, and then Starship will just simply consolidate these into one shipment. So now you're not going to have to end up paying for seven individual shipments that are really going to the same location. Okay, We could also do it by the same PO numbers as well. Okay? But again, for the sake of the demo, I'm just going to quickly select one of these orders. And as you see, as soon as I select or scan in that barcode or type it in, um, that sales order number, Starship's typically going to bring in all the data, right? So now, as you see, Starship is, as Simon mentioned, going to replace UPS WorldShip, FedEx Ship Manager. And with Starship, the nice thing is, just like ShipGear, we are going to be able to data map your fields. But with Starship, we can look at a lot more Sage 100 fields. And as you're going to see, we're going to bring in a lot more information. You know, not only are we are going to bring in, in this case, the order header information, we can bring in the line item detail. Right. So, again, just simple data mapping, but we really want to take any of the Starship fields, point those to your Sage 100 fields, and those could be standard 100 fields, or if you're using user-defined or, or custom fields, we can map those in as well. Right? But, again, we want to set this up so the less things the shipper has to click, type, touch, of course, the better. Right? And here's some examples of that. If anyone out there is doing blind drop shipments, as you see, I have my system set up. Starship automatically knows, hey, this one's for Tractor Supply Company, automatically changing the company name. Okay, so one way we could do that. Uh, recipient information, still going to do that address validation. Uh, we do validate ZIP plus four as well as the residential commercial flag. And the nice thing with Starship doing is that is, of course, if we do have any changes due to the validation, Starship could update it here. But if you want, we can even reverse translate that back onto the invoice inside of Sage 100. All right. Now, my transportation, we're going to just look at your ship via codes inside of Sage 100. Use those to tell Starship things like carrier service account. Here's another example. This is a third-party shipment. Now, as a shipper, everything's populated for me. Billing type has changed to third party. My customer's account number has been filled out. Even this dropdown, which is a database Starship has to store your third-party address information, as well as customers' different account numbers, automatically populating all that. So another way, I don't have to stop and you know, fill out billing accounts or change the billing type. 
right? And I actually do have to change this back to sender because we at will validate that billing account for those third party type shipments. So Starship in that scenario, because it was a fake number, is going to yell at me and it's not going to allow me to send out that shipment. So just another way to help save some money, uh, because of course, if you do send out a third party type shipment with an invalid account number, the carrier is going to charge you for that. Right. Um, our shipment details really just our shipping options, but in a live environment, the first spot we usually go to is a packaging tab here or a drop down because this is where we're going to be able to see those line items. Um, I can then add boxes. If I want, I can even put items in boxes. If any of you out there are looking at or using a, a warehouse management solution for Sage 100, also know you're going to be able to define all the shipping details through that WMS. So really all the information like item to box, quantities, even package or dimensions and weights, you can scan ahead of time and have that flow into Starship, right? But really in this scenario, again, just for the sake of time, I'm just gonna quickly build this, but as you see, drag and drop, we can move multiple items, split quantities, but if we wanna get into that item to box detail, it is just simple drag and drop, all right? But with Starship, you don't have to put items in boxes. So if you do have some large orders where, hey, maybe we have a hundred line items, I don't want my shipper to stop and have to stop and drag and drop things. It's not a requirement. So you don't have to put items in boxes. And the same thing with this packaging database. You don't have to use this, but if you are using the carrier supplied boxes or even have your set size boxes, bag, bale, pallets, what have you, you could as a shipper then select those. Nice thing is Starship would automatically populate the dimensions. Right. And then our quantities, basically units on shipments, my system I'm pulling by the sales order. So Starship's automatically looking, okay, what was ordered and what's available? Of course, if anything was backordered, it's going to come into Starship backordered. Back and we even have a, a security feature where if you wanted to, you could allow your shippers to modify the units on shipment. And, you know, for example, maybe we went around, say the inventory's off, oh, we only have five out of the six blankets. They could change that. And what have they changed that value to is what's going to be updated inside of Sage. Okay. Our weights. Here's just another way I've automated my system where I have the weight set up inside of Sage. Mapping in those weights, Starship automatically calculates them for me. Of course, if you're using a scale, we can pull weights from the scale. You could mainly type them in. And then our bill weight, that's going to be the carrier's dimensional calculation. So Starship will automatically run that. And anytime we do have a difference, like in this scenario, what Starship will do, it's gonna rate shop at the correct dimensional weight. And then as a shipper, when they click ship and process, this will go to the carrier at that correct dimensional weight as well. So later on, you're not gonna receive that bill from you know, UPS FedEx that says, hey, you sent that out at 16 pounds, dimensionally it was 19, here's the difference, okay? So again, that's just our packaging. After that, we usually can scroll down here. And this is where we're gonna be able to do that live rate shopping that Simon is talking about. Okay, so here are my system Starship's pinging just my parcel carriers because this is a small parcel shipment. And it's automatically returning information like business days, total days, ETA, published list, contract is your live negotiated contract rate. And then the applied uh, charge column inside Starship, that is basically what we write back into Sage 100 as what you want to charge the customer. Those can also include plus or minus freight rules. So if you're doing things like, hey, free shipping over X amount of dollars, Starship can do that. Uh, we could do things like, hey, if it's this certain item, you know what, add a flat rate because we're going to use additional packaging material. Maybe it's fragile, right? So Starship can even help calculate and add or subtract additional flat rates, percentages, min maxes, calculations. We can also do things like write back rules where, hey, you know what, maybe the order came from a website, we already charged the customer. So in those scenarios, we can tell Starship, you know what, do not overwrite the amount inside of Sage, okay? Um, also, we can automate this, do things like Best Way, where Starship automatically um, selects maybe the least expensive carrier. But in this scenario, I'm just going to quickly click Ship and Process. And also in a live environment right now, Starship would just be printing out all your different shipping documents. I PDF everything for the sake of the demo. Um, so it take, takes them a minute to pop all these, especially because this was international. And as you can see here, Starship is going to be able to generate those international documents if you like. Everything's filled out. We can customize documents. Here, this one's customized, it's signed, dated. I don't have to fill anything out with this document. Certificate of origin, again, everything's populated. And then I can get my shipping labels, packing list. And of course, these can go to thermal printers or laser printers or a combo of both. All right. So again, just different options. Even with packing lists, we can customize them and create rules. So if you are doing blind drop shipments, here's one, Starship knows, yep, 
print this special packing list that has their tractor supply company's logo and information. Right? But again, usually we just click shipping process, Starship generates the documents, as you see, takes me right back to the main screen. And then the nice feature, this is kind of a, a difference between Shipgear and Starship, is inside Starship, if I pull by the sales order number, Starship on right back, again, as soon as that shipper clicks ship and process, is automatically going to create the invoice inside of Save. So here's SO invoice data entry, sales order 222, the one we just shipped. On the header, we can reverse translate things like ship via. But here's a big difference. Boom, tracking information is directly inside the correct page tracking tables. So I can use their uh, shortcut to do tracking. Or maybe I want to see item to box detail. I could see all that right from inside of Sage. Uh, we could, as I mentioned, reverse translate the ship via or the uh, ship to address. And then, of course, on the totals, this is where we would push back that Sage freight amount or the, the amount that you want to charge them. But another nice thing with Starship is we actually have a built-in custom write back feature. So if you wanted to take additional shipping information, you could actually push that back into, for example, like I have here, a user defined field. So I'm always pushing back, hey, what's my live contract rate with that carrier? And then before someone updates these, because Starship just creates them, you still have to update them, you know, do the printing, emailing, daily transaction register, all that fun stuff. But they could actually compare. And in this scenario, hey, you know what? We shorted ourselves. Uh, you know, this should be $295 or whatever the case may be. Okay. So as you see, a lot of different built-in options that aren't only going to help the warehouse, our shippers, but it's also going to help the front office. And also speaking of helping the front office, I'll uh, just quickly jump back into Starship and kind of wrap this up, but I want to show you our dashboard program. So of course we do have this for ship gear, but again, because Starship is grabbing a much more information from Sage, it's going to allow you to see much more data and run different reports that contain a lot of different information. So for example, here I just have a heat map, but we can do history status. You know, maybe as a front office person, I just want to come in here and see, you know, what's shipped or late deliveries. But I can just quickly see a summary of the shipment. I can even drill down. I have some clients that use this feature because, you know what, a lot of times a customer calls, I didn't get my shipping document or whatever the document might be. You could even reprint them or view them right from here. So, again, this is included with Starship. It does not require any additional user seats or licenses. And here's just a bunch of canned reports that we have if you want to run any of these. Right. And then last but not least in here is our e-notify program. So again, this is available for ship gear. I'm not sure if anyone's taking advantage of it, but with Starship, you have access to that. But now that we're bringing in that line item information, you're going to see, for example, on this template, I can show my customer my company information, Sage Fields IPO, sales order number, where it's going. But down here, I can even get into that detail where, hey, your first package, these are the two items your second package. So different options with this email. You know, I even bring in things like, hey, you're getting two packages. ETA is coming from the carrier. That's accurate. And the real nice thing, tracking information is going to be hyperlinked. Going to kick them to the carrier's website so they could actually track and hopefully not end up calling you to find out where their shipment is. Okay. And then with these templates, you can even assign emailing rules. So if you want to do things like promo codes, maybe you only want this to go to certain customers. The other nice thing is you can hyperlink fields to kick them back to your website or wherever you want to take them. Okay. So again, just a, a quick overview. Uh, like Simon mentioned, please feel free to reach out to us if uh, you have any additional questions um, or you know want to do a deeper dive. But with that, I'm going to send this back to Simon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now.